Summary of the Art of Travel by Alain D. E. Botton Alain de Botton explores the philosophical dimensions of travel in the art of travel. He views travel as a reflection of the human search for happiness and wonders how and why people should travel, not just where. To this end, de Botton juxtaposes his own travels with those of canonical Western artists and writers in each of the book's nine essays, all are European men from the 18th and 19th centuries, besides one 20th century American man, painter Edward Hopper. De Botton argues that travel teaches people about their own character, values, and potential by exposing them to places they may discover they prefer to their own, landscapes and art that teach them about beauty and humanity's limited perspective, and a travel mindset that enables them to discover a sense of wonder in the places they already live. De Botton explains why travel frequently disappoints in his first essay, On Anticipation, People Expect Serenity, and continuous joy on vacations, which they perceive as breaks from their daily lives, but are surprised to discover that they only find moments of happiness and are unable to let go of their daily problems. De Botton recalls his own vacation to sunny Barbados, prompted by a brochure promising palm trees and sea during a dreary London winter. When de Botton arrived, he quickly became dissatisfied with the beach and got into an argument with his girlfriend M which made him realize that travel cannot provide people with aesthetic or material pleasure until their basic psychological needs are met. He draws parallels between his journey and that of the Duc de Essientes, the protagonist of J.K. Hoisman's novel Rebars, who becomes enamored with the idea of visiting London after reading Dickens, but decides to return once he arrives at the train station. Whereas de Essientes came to believe that travel was superior in the imagination to reality, which he believed diluted the distinctive qualities of places with everyday images, de Botton maintains that travel can deviate from expectations without being a failure. In conversation with French poet Charles Baudelaire and American painter Edward Hopper, de Botton's subsequent essay, On Traveling Places, extols the virtues of the airport, service station, shipyard, motel, and train car. De Botton discovers a poetic solitude in a fluorescently lit roadside restaurant, and a promise of happiness while watching planes take off and land at Heathrow Airport in London. He recalls Baudelaire's ambivalence toward travel. The poet cut short a trip to India after discovering that the voyage did not alleviate his depression, but he continued to fantasize about traveling anywhere. Anywhere, and waiting at docks to watch ships set sail for happiness. Baudelaire believed that poets who were dissatisfied with conventional society were doomed to travel in search of something better and de Botton sees Edward Hopper's paintings of pensive, lonely characters in American travel destinations as odes to such poetic wanderers. In On the Exotic, de Botton recounts French novelist Gustave Flaubert's obsession with the Middle East or, as 19th-century Europeans referred to it, the Orient, and draws parallels between Flaubert's ecstasy upon visiting Egypt and his own intense pleasure at the cultural differences between Amsterdam and London. From the peculiarities of Dutch vowels to the narrow brick houses that prioritis order over ornamentation, de Botton develops an affinity for Dutch culture, just as Flaubert develops an appreciation for the chaos and irreverence he observes in Egypt. De Botton argues that by discovering the foreign exotic, travelers can gain insight into their own aesthetic sensibilities and discover how these exotic elements can contribute to their own personal fulfillment. The fourth essay examines curiosity, specifically, Alexander von Humboldt's profusion of it during his scientific expedition to South America at the turn of the 19th century, as opposed to de Botton's complete lack of it during a trip to Madrid that he immediately and profoundly regrets. Once he drags himself out of bed, de Botton cannot bring himself to appreciate the deluge of dates and measurements thrown at him by his tourist guidebook, and he finds its insistence on ranking tourist attractions according to their historical significance particularly repulsive. Whereas Humboldt insisted on studying everything he could get his hands, and scientific instruments, on in South America, de Botton asserts that travelers in the 21st century have little left to discover. Using the distinction made by German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche between collecting new facts in a quasi-scientific manner and learning existing facts for the purpose of personal enrichment, de Botton argues that tourism can only be meaningful for travelers if it helps them connect their experience to the deeper questions at the heart of human existence. De Botton retraces the famous poet William Wordsworth's route through the English Lake District in On the Country and the City. 
Wordsworth argued that city dwellers could overcome many of their anxieties and learn to act more virtuously if they engaged in mindful and reflective nature experiences. As the English literary community came to accept Wordsworth's ideas, the populace began to migrate from cities to the countryside. De Botton follows them to the Lake District, where he begins to notice trees, animals, and landscapes in greater detail, and even imagines their worldviews. When he returns to his life in London, he learns to use memories of moments in nature, which Wordsworth referred to as spots of time, as a therapeutic stress relief tool. De Botton loses himself in the Sinai Desert in his sixth essay, while reading Irish philosopher Edmund Burke's treatise on the beautiful and sublime. Burke argues that vast and overwhelming landscapes, such as the Sinai can serve as a reminder of humanity's insignificance in the face of nature's boundless power. Indeed, de Botton suggests that such a sentiment may inspire belief in God, evoking the Old Testament's Book of Job, in which God informs the unlucky Job that he cannot fathom the universe's logic by pointing to nature's sheer enormity and force. De Botton concludes that by encountering the sublime, people can learn to accept their will's limitations and become more humble in front of the world. In the following essay, de Botton explores the relationship between art and travel by following the path of renowned post-impressionist painter Vincent van Gogh through southern France's province region. While de Botton initially struggles to understand why so many travelers regard Provence as uniquely beautiful, after studying van Gogh's life and work, he begins to appreciate the region's particularly favorable climate and abundant plant life, which together create the richly colored landscapes immortalized in Van Gogh's work. While Van Gogh defied artistic tradition by emphasizing color and motion over line and form, de Botton argues that the Dutch painter did not reject realism, the idea that art should accurately reflect what the observer sees, but rather focused on portraying the psychological effect of being in Provence realistically. De Botton believes that all artists must make choices about what to include and exclude from their work, and Van Gogh demonstrates how these choices can affect how artists' audiences perceive the world in new ways and where their attention is directed when they travel. In his penultimate essay, De Botton considers how travelers can progress from merely appreciating the beauty of the places and sites they visit to truly comprehending and possessing that beauty. Following in the footsteps of 19th century art educator John Ruskin, who spent the majority of his life teaching drawing to working-class English people, de Botton explains how travelers can develop the ability to notice rather than merely look at a place by drawing it rather than photographing or passing through it. De Botton attempts to draw a window and a tree, affirming that he begins to notice the details that make them beautiful to him and to comprehend the aesthetic principles that fundamentally shape his perception of beauty. In his concluding essay, On Habit, de Botton considers how people can reintroduce the travel mindset into their daily lives. By summarizing Xavier de Maester's pajama-clad journey around my bedroom, de Botton suggests that people can discover novelty and beauty in their immediate surroundings by learning to pay attention to their surroundings and explore without the frantic sense of purpose that they frequently carry in daily life. De Botton concludes that this mindset is travel's ultimate gift to those who choose to embark on it. It enriches life by teaching people to be receptive to their surroundings and humble in the face of what is novel, beautiful, and surprising in the world. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.